there are two states that I think, if we could really crack, we could really understand the underlying neural mechanisms, and we could understand how people could get themselves into these two states, we would greatly improve human health and human performance. And those two states are the, the state of sleep, not just that sleep is important, but how to get better at sleeping. And the other state is clear, calm, focused. If we can figure out how those work. It's my belief that we'll do humankind a great service. Well, I always say, you know, all of human evolution is based on human neuroplasticity. My actually scientific great grandparents, David Hubel and Torrance and Weasel, won the Nobel Prize for showing there are critical periods, these periods of development after which the brain cannot change. Merzenich came along and said, you know what, I don't buy that. And he started doing experiments with his students and postdocs where they would create an essential need or contingency. Like if the animal doesn't eat unless it learns something, then the brain can change. If you break down learning events into kind of smaller, more focused events, the brain can change as an adult at essentially any age. And so the strongest drive for adult neuroplasticity is focus. It's the ability to say, I, this is really important. It's almost like being in a state of stress. So, but if we're just gonna focus on sleep, the brain wants to figure out duration, path, and outcome. How long is something gonna last? What's the path to do it? And how's it gonna work out? When you go to sleep, your perception of space and time becomes untethered. It becomes very fluid. So when you lie down to go to sleep at night and you're drowsy, you stop doing these duration path outcome analyses. And if you have trouble sleeping, it's because you're still doing what's the duration, what's the path, what's the outcome, your brain's looping in that. So that period is essential for resetting neural circuits in the brain so that during wakefulness, you can do duration path outcome, like learning a new martial art. You can put people into hypnotic states, which are very sleep-like. They're a little different than sleep, but they're like a shallow stage of sleep. And those sleep-like states do two things that are very powerful. One is they reset our ability to do these very taxing, demanding duration path outcome kind of brain functions. As well, they allow people to access sleep more easily. You know, so we want people to be able to get into deep sleep because nothing is as restorative as deep sleep because in deep sleep and in the states that I'm talking about, these rela deeply relaxed states, duration path outcome analyses are impossible. And I think being able to toggle back and forth between these states is really where high performance emerges. So if you're an adult, what is the best way to learn this quickly? Regardless of how agitated you feel, you have to lean in and focus extremely hard. Now, the reason for that is that there's a neurochemical norepinephrine, also called adrenaline, same thing, that's released in the brain and body. Most people back off at that point because they feel this agitation. But we have to remember that that noradrenaline was designed to get us into movement. That's the purpose of noradrenaline, to take us out of stillness and into movement. And then the other thing we have to do is we have to take that elevated level of alertness and we have to focus it. You can sit there and just ramp up your level of urgency through purely psychological means. You could take an ice bath. You could do high intensity breathing. Anything that brings your level of alertness up, that sets the plasticity trigger. However, that doesn't guarantee that those synapses are going to change. It does not mean that you're necessarily going to learn. Oh, no. What guarantees that that process will be converted into literally the change in the connections between neurons is states of deep sleep and any state where you're not doing duration path outcome. Focus intensely, have an intense period of urgency, and then access the deepest rest you can where you're not thinking about anything, where space and time becomes very fluid. Elite performers, they understand that the ability to toggle back and forth between these high alert, high attentional states and deep rest is not just the key to performing what you can already, what you can already do, it's also the ability to get better over time. There is a secret sauce in this whole mix. So you asked about kids, like why they can learn all day long. Mm. So their brain is very different, but it still needs some degree of focus and they still need to get their sleep. But they engage in something else, which is really powerful, which is play. A lot of their learning is through playful exchange. The molecule dopamine is a really misunderstood molecule. People think of it as like reward, like, oh, I got a bunch of money or I you know, did a great performance. But in addition, dopamine is what's released anytime an animal or human thinks it's on the right path. 
Mm. And that's very subjective. Let's take the fight example where it's stressful and you're getting beaten down. All of a sudden you land one or you do something properly and the other guy starts to timber a little bit or shuffle a little bit. You gain a chemical advantage. Dopamine is evoked through play. It's evoked through humor. You can be in the worst situation and somebody will crack a joke. And all of a sudden it's like you have energy. And the reason dopamine is so powerful in this process of neuroplasticity is that dopamine has the ability to buffer noradrenaline. So that stress that you feel when you're in effort, it's very hard for most people to keep that going. There was a study that came out two years ago that asked, why do we quit? And it turns out that for every bit of effort, any bit of effort, lifting a glass of water or running up a hill or in a fight, there are little bits of us of noradrenaline, adrenaline that are released in the brain and body. And if it hits a certain threshold, the brain stops voluntary control over the muscular. It just says, that's it, I quit. Dopamine pushes back that level of noradrenaline and it gives you more gas. It lets you go further. And you see this through teamwork, when you feel like you're supported, when you're you know, mm. in cohesion, humor, play. There's a kind of loosening or a lightening and you have more energy. That energy is reductions in epinephrine. We've had David Goggins out to the lab. David has somehow figured out that the leaning in process for him is the dopamine trigger. Like there is a kind of sicko thing about the way he talks about it. Like it's like a, it's a little bit masochistic. For other people, they find this in purpose, like that you're doing this for your kids or you're doing this for somebody else. You know, I think that the human animal has a capacity to, to push, has a capacity to focus, has a capacity to learn at all ages. But these gates on plasticity are set by certain requirements. And, you know, when I look out there and I see all the stuff about, um, you know, psychology and all the self-help and wellness stuff, you know, I'm a neuroscientist, so I look at the lens of everything through neurochemicals and neuroscience, but it all kind of boils down to a couple basic chemicals and systems or what we call circuits in the brain.